to another season of the turtle and the tiger happy new year i thought i'd take the time to make the first video of the season a tech video we didn't do a lot of tech videos back in 2018 so we're going to try to mix it up a little bit more this year first one i want to talk about though is solar now last year we talked about and probably if you've seen the video we did a walk around you'll know that there are three 100 watt solar panels on the roof of our truck they work really well especially when the sun's right above them but the panels don't tilt and in this time of the year fall winter what have you when the sun's pretty low on the horizon the efficiency goes way 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 down now you couple that with the fact that we have some a little bit above average consumption requirements uh, in terms of electricity and what all ends up happening at the end of the day is we end up short in terms of refreshing our batteries never quite being able to get to 100 percent uh, and even on some of the best solar days so what to do well first we got to identify the consumer the biggest consumer of our electricity come to find out is our ASP refrigerator freezer why it was only supposed to use about as much amperage as our refrigerator well that's true except we're using it more as a freeze dedicated freezer so not only is the amperage higher but the cycle times are higher as well so that's where our consumption's coming into play so what to do well you can either change how you're consuming your electricity or you can change on how much uh, getting more electricity I suppose I could say so we're gonna do just that and we're gonna do that well the idea came from what we already have which is a Renogy solar suitcase suite which is a hundred watt portable suitcase solar panel that we already use with our turtleback trailer and we're going to take that one step further and utilize what the turtleback trailer utilizes in terms of a connector and cable uh, this was a cable that i fixed um, put together last year for the trailer and i thought we could do something similar to the truck and that's exactly what we did we installed a zamp i believe it's called an sae uh, connector receptacle to the truck so stay tuned and we'll talk about how we did that and how it worked out so I had my installer install my Zamp receptacle they said that the usual place to install it was on the left side well it worked out pretty good they were able to wire it through some of my cabinets under the floor of the bathroom and the wires came up into the blue sky boost uh, control box had I had the chance to do it again and I might also do it in the future. I think I might install one of these on the right side as well to give me some more flexibility in terms of where I can put my auxiliary panel. The other thing you want to be aware of is when you see these online or wherever, be sure to get them with appropriate gauge wiring that's on them. There are a lot of them out there that come with 12 gauge wiring. I opted for the 10 gauge wiring only because it matches up better with a cable setup that I made for the turtleback trailer. And 10 gauge is a little bit more efficient than 12 gauge. Well, now that we know where and how this was installed on the outside of the rig, let's go on the inside and check out how it's wired into the Blue Sky Boost control system. All right, this is the Blue Sky Solar Boost setup that I have in the rig. Um, the connections that we're concerned with mostly is down on the bottom here all the way across. Now when I first got the vehicle back from the installer who put the receptacle in for me and said that there was going to be no problem in wiring it in, the wiring was done and connected here to these two connections. And I'll show you a picture of that. Well, as it turns out, that's nah, not the right connections and I found that out because I hooked up the auxiliary panel and it didn't work so I started running the meter back to through the wiring and then got out the manual and found out that this was actually a charger 
uh, connection and this is a load connection. Neither of which would work in any fashion for an auxiliary solar input. So I'm not sure what the train of thought with the installer was at the time. However, it was clear that an operational check after installation probably wasn't done. Instead, they're supposed to be over here, which is where they are now. The positive and the negative are right on top of where the roof array is wired into the box here. And then of course these two are the battery output, uh, the wires that go to the battery. All right, so that's how uh, it was wired when I got it, and this is how it's wired now, and it works like a charm. All right, so that is uh, the Blue Sky Solar Boost setup. So this is my Renogy Solar Suitcase solar panel. It comes in a its own uh, carrying case. That's why they call it a solar suitcase. 100 watts and uh, pretty heavy duty. And I also use it for my turtleback trailer as well. Uh, I'm going to put some links down below so you can see some of the modifications I did to the panel to be able to take the internal controller out of the picture when you use it in the applications that I use them in, yet still be able to use the controller in a future date. I think so. It's January here in Texas. We're about, oh, 50 miles east of Austin, and January. Looks like January 4th at about uh, 2.15 in the afternoon local time. The angle of the sun, it's, it's not terribly close to the horizon, but it's close enough to the horizon where the three top panels on the truck are probably not working at peak efficiency. So let's go inside and do a before and after. Before we hook up the auxiliary panel and after. Stay tuned. Okay, I hope you can read this. It's at 94% right now. Uh, we've got about 25 amps to go before full. And we're at negative, point, uh, negative 1.8 amps right now. So we're using more than we're producing for three panels upstairs or on the roof. We got 3.5 out and 3.0 in. All right, so let's go ahead and hook up the wire outside to the aux panel and see what the difference is. So we've just hooked up the panel. We're still at 94%. Still at down 25 amps. But we're up plus 3.8. We're putting out 9.1. So quite, quite the difference right now and to be honest with you I probably could tweak the panel outside even a little bit more to get just a little bit more out of it so I hope this video was helpful in some way if you have any comments or questions please feel free to give them down below in the comment section and follow the link if you want to our blog so until next time take care stay safe bye bye now